now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex and this is The Ramble and we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York. Uh, that guy there, uh, that's Albert Reynoso. He will at some point during this conversation do something to put me down. Go ahead. You want to do That's it now? You want to do it later? I, you know, I wanted to start by saying, "How's your hand?" Because last time I saw your hand had a big bruise on well, that it. That was that I, was a week about a week ago, right? right yeah, it hasn't was, gotten any better. Where, no, it's where is, the, that, there it is. That's yeah, it hasn't so, ooh, gotten wow, any yeah. better. Oh, that's, that's yeah, terrible. It, it has stayed that way for a week now. Well, I'm sorry. Well, to hear well at least since the last time knee? we talked, the knee. Oh, the knee still hasn't really healed up. The initial segment from now on when I see you is a, a recap of your ailment. Well, I see, the next time we ask for a recap of that ailment, it will have gotten better. I hope so. See, I th- hope this so. will not be a problem anymore. And last time I, I asked about what it is that people uh, see or, or hear, why do they come to listen to this, what is essentially a phone call between you and I. Yeah. And I read some very interesting comments down below in the YouTube section. So really, I wanna, really. I okay, keep, keep those YouTube that. comments coming right now, folks. It was uh, it was very interesting, and also the couple of people that agreed with me um, about humanity, every human being being a selfish, hypocritical, judgmental liar. Thank you for that, mm-hmm. and and nobody disagreed. Everybody. Nobody agreed. disagreed. No, I noticed not, that. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, and then... I, I was talking with you just before we started this about a, a film, because we, in the past, talked about films and TV shows and yeah. things. And that I just made an aside that that, that, uh, that interested you. I said that I watched the movie Brazil by uh, director Terry Gilliam maybe once every, at least once every two years. Um and it, I think it came out in 1984. Mm-hmm. And every time I watch it, it becomes more prophetic and and seems like things are almost like that, even more so every time I watch it. And you said you, you were interested in maybe speaking about Notice that. Notice I've just frozen? Yes, you are frozen. That's because this camera suddenly froze on me, but I will now go to my other camera. There we oh, go. Okay. There we go. Let me just make a few uh, a little changes here to this one. And if it goes, I've even got a third camera sitting up here. But uh, let me see here. Let me go down. Mm-hmm. And let me go over. There we go. And we're fine now. Um, wow. I, I don't know how long I was frozen. Just a short time. But So I just go to my other camera. Yeah. Very nice. But anyway, where were you? Uh, Brazil. Yeah, and you said you had some something you wanted to say about that because I, I think it. I think we're getting closer and well, closer. Well, I remember the film, but I don't remember it that well that I can probably give you a judgment on it. Uh, but you're probably right. You know. Uh, well, I mean, when I first saw it, there were terrorists blowing things up. Mm-hmm. That was part of life. And it hit, and and in the movie the, the the guy on the television in the beginning of the movie says this has been going on for thirteen years and they are just bad sports and that's kind of the kind of the way we've gotten now we have terrorism going on all the time and you know whoever is not a good person we just automatically call them terrorists that's the way it is mm-hmm. and we kind of live with the whole thing now uh, yeah. what what are you going to do about it and uh, also there's a lot of duct work. Mm-hmm. Literally ducts going throughout the houses and the apartments of everywhere you go to in the restaurants. There's these big ducts, and now I look I look around at ads and there's ads for cleaning of your ducts because we have ducts for uh, um, air conditioning. We have ducts for uh, laundry ducts. 
to 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 filter to get the laundry exhaust. So that's that's come true too, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it seems like it's all happening to us now. Right. Yeah. So that was, that was it. All the all the ducts around. I mean, excuse me. I was just fixing my picture because I went to another camera and I'm green now. Do I look green? No, you look pink. You look like a salmon. This is now orange, like a salmon. Yeah, it's kind of changing. Like a trout. Anyway, I'm having to use the other camera. See if I went back to my other camera. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I don't think it will show up. Let's see here. See, I'm frozen. My question: I'm fro Why do, I'm why do people listen and watch? <laughs> hmm. The, You're frozen again. Yeah. Well, I'm going to unfreeze myself. We're frozen okay. salmon now. Here we go, Logitech Brio. Here we go. Oh, come on. I put Logitech now you sound Brio. like you're underwater. You're under. Oh, you're literally here. an underwater salmon now. I hope people are enjoying there this. There we go. Okay. But okay. your mic sounds terrible. My mic sounds terrible. Yeah. Why does it sound terrible? It sounds like it's a a a, a mic on a laptop from far away. But it isn't a mic from a laptop. What can I tell you? It's to me, it sounds far terrible. Away. It sounds terrible. Yeah, when you when you watch oh, it back, you realize you've screwed it, everything. Up. No, I, I didn't screw anything up here. You're you're oh. you're giving me a bad time. Okay. When you watch it back, you'll hear what what what's the time on it, and you'll watch back, and and you'll you'll know that the the mic doesn't sound good anymore. At this point, I can hear through my earphones, and it sounds just fine. Okay, you'll check. You'll check it when it's sounds down. just fine. <laughs> You sound like you're underwater. There's nothing wrong with my microphone. Okay. All right. It sounds just fine. Very nice. Nice. Does it sound nice. better now? No. Aside from your your. There might your, be something going out to you. you I don't know. Go no ahead. Idea. Well, let's 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 get back to what what you were saying about Brazil or something. Oh, you were talking about Brazil. I just oh, I haven't seen it. In years, so I can't bespeak to you know how it becomes more uh, of the uh, of the times, okay? But I imagine it could. It was a prophetic tale, and it probably his prophecy was accurate, you know. So far, I think. Yeah, and so, Robert De Niro was great in it. Oh yeah, yeah. And who played the lead character? What was his name? Uh, Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Yeah, terrific actor. Is yeah. he still alive? Yeah, I think. Or did yes, he? he is. Yeah, okay. All right. Just, just checking in. You know, you know, I do that a lot with uh, my, uh, my. Uh, what's the device we call it? Uh, uh, it I, I call it Echo, but I can't say that because that's the key word. But Alexa. Alexa. You so, do what with Alexa? Well, I, I'm watching a show, and it's like Robert, somebody asked, some actor. Mm-hmm. And then I will ask her, when, when did he die? Or is he still alive? Or whatever. Yeah, That's my main question that I ask Alexa. Death questions about famous personalities. Can you ask her about you once in a while? No. no. Just to see. No. Is Alex Bennett... Well, let me ask her. Uh, Echo, is Alex Bennett still alive? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, no, he passed away in 2023. <laughs> I passed away in 2023. Wow. Whoa. You, you ever had that feeling maybe you did die and you, you just don't know it? Oh, this is brilliant. I like this. <laughs> Ask her again. Maybe, okay. she, maybe she's wrong. Echo... Is Alex Bennett still alive? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, no, he passed away in 2023. Oh, my God. Can I sue them for that? <laughs> uh, that's priceless. This is, going to be, this is going to be the most watched of your podcasts and most listened to ever. Because you're according not actually to, alive. According, and, according to Alexa, I'm dead. The ghost of Alex Bennett hosts the podcast. Gee, I've never asked that before. See? Interesting things. Yeah. I mean, like, for instance, Alexa, I mean, Echo, 
Is Jim Carrey still alive? Jim Carrey is still alive. See, he's, uh, Jim Carrey's still alive. And then I go uh, elect uh, Echo. Is Alex Bennett still alive? Echo. Is Alex Bennett still alive? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, no, he passed away in 2020. You see? Wow. Maybe you should ask about Gilbert okay, Gottfried. Here, here we because go. He always, said, he always used to say Alex Bennett is still alive. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Let me... Let me let me just for a moment. Let me ask. Uh, Echo is radio personality Alex Bennett still alive? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, yes. Oh yes. Oh, okay. And it says I'm 83 years old. All right. Okay. That's so good. as long as I put radio personality in front of it, so probably there is an Alex Bennett who did die, but it's not this Alex Bennett. That's good to hear because I just took a sip of uh, my drink and I was going to do a spit take if she said no after you said radio personality. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to get anything wet around. However, here. if I ask her, uh, is Alex Bennett a radio personality, I would love to hear the answer on that one. And she'll say no, nobody is because uh, the internet killed the radio stars. That's right. So nobody's a radio personality anymore. I'm sorry I invented the podcast. <laughs> what could you do about it? Nothing you can do. Nothing. But, you know, I mean, I did. Well, gee, technology marches on. I have proof. Okay. I have the okay. program that was used to deliver it here. You know? So, I mean, I but I'm, I'm sorry that it, because there are, well, how many now? 300,000 podcasts or something like that? I would say that's probably a low number. Yeah, I think just about everybody has one now. I mean, don't, don't. It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous, you know. And they all make tons of money for people. But there's no money in radio anymore. No, you know, except for maybe very few, few people here and there. Uh, and it's all been taken over by the internet. That's the way it goes. And somebody who's got a podcast about a murder gets better numbers than you know anybody you can name. I don't understand that because I, and I don't listen to podcasts, not regularly anyway, and yeah. I don't, certainly don't listen to podcasts about murders, but I know that's yeah. popular. It's very I, popular. I look, I look at, uh, I turn on Netflix and it's one death murder thing, murder thing, murder investigation, uh, trial of this trial. What's the obsession with all with the? Well, what with I find that? Netflix has a lot of, rather than that, is that it has a lot of. Uh, uh, what's what's what am I looking for? Uh, it has a lot of uh, foreign programs mm -hmm. from other countries. Those are foreign, yes. and they're like you know six episodes, so they're a binge watch. Mm -hmm. But they're from another country, and you know why the stuff coming from another country is so popular? is because nothing's being done in this country right now. So they have to get their stuff elsewhere. But also there's there's great stuff in other countries. There's mm -hmm. there's some there's some great program. I mean, you you've been watching uh stuff coming from England for decades now. I know that cuz you turned me on to some great programs. Yeah, but, like, but many times of course, you'd Mr. Who, many times you best. you'd have to go onto the internet, right? Well, yeah. And yeah. and get those. All right. Um, so, you know, you would have to find ways of getting them. Like, at a point, I was getting Doctor Who from Torrance that came from England. It mm -hmm. wasn't even being shown in this country. So, yes, we were watching a lot of that stuff. But most of that stuff now comes over here. Most of that stuff is bought up by one of the streaming services. I mean, all, the, why not? all of Doctor Who, every uh, Doctor Who there is, is on uh, Max. Max now, yeah. Yeah. Paramount's buying up a lot of stuff. Every every uh, service is buying up stuff because they need the content. Do you know which one? Which one do you is the best? Of the, uh, and I don't know if you have them all, but I'll tell you which one's the best right now. Um, I think I probably watch more Netflix than any any other, but I do watch a little bit of Paramount. I do watch a little bit of Apple. 
Uh, the best one to, for my money, the new HBO, is not Mac. HBO because Max is getting terrible. Yeah. Apple TV. They're doing some spectacular stuff. Yeah, I watched some stuff. Foundation. Uh, Oof. Oof. You didn't watch I it? The, I got sucked into the first series and I didn't care for it. Really? I liked it. I thought it was too too bloated. Too much going on there. There was a lot going on. I, I will give you that. But all I'm saying is that they seem to do the quality programs now. You know? I think I think Netflix still still carries a lot of weight there. They're kind of though I always found them to be the cheap HBO. You know, they were always a level below in quality. I, HBO, I, never, I never thought that. And I think HBO's got quality programs, but but I think Netflix is on par with HBO. Really? Okay. Yeah. I yeah. I um my favorite right now is Apple TV. I think that what are, what are you what are you consuming on Apple TV? Well, I'm the Foundation. Uh, uh, it's just overall. Like the second series of Foundation? Uh, it's not as good as the first. No, that, then I'm not going to watch it because I didn't. I, it was a slog for me to get through. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, it's not finished yet. So it, it, sometimes with a series like that, you got to wait till the last episode to then find out what was the overarching, you know. I don't have it in me. I don't, don't have, have it in, it in you. I'd uh, rather I'd rather read the book. I like the series with uh, Harrison Ford as a shrink. Oh, I couldn't stand that. You really? And couldn't. I watched the whole. I watched the whole thing. I watched the whole thing, and I liked. Uh, Did you the think other? he was good in it? The comedian. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name now. I know who you're talking about. The guy who stars in it. I yeah. thought he was okay. I thought that I thought there were moments of that show that were really good because they they were. Um, really dramatically well done but then the farcical stuff was too too far out into the realm of unbelievable and no i did not think harrison ford was any good in that show oh, really oh okay i did not think he was good at all did i you? thought i thought his partner the girl who who worked in the same office with him was great yeah. i thought she was a great role oh, she was terrific but i thought but I, I thought harrison, I don't think harrison ford i'd was never good seen at. harrison ford do that kind of role Okay, that's why I enjoyed it. He actually had to act. I don't think he did. It was just an angry old man to me. You know, I don't think there was a lot of acting there at all. Because most, you know, most of the acting that Harrison Ford has done in his career is reacting. But it works. Indiana Jones, you can't beat that. No, you can't beat that, but he's a great reactor. But yeah. he's not a great actor. Well, then I don't think he's a great actor because I didn't think that the psychologist thing was great at all. How about, have you seen, uh, uh, was it 1923? I haven't seen 1923. I, I heard things about it, but. What did you I hear? Heard, good? Yeah, I heard good things about it. Yeah. it the, the, the subject matter just doesn't do it for me. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the, maybe, the, maybe the time period or something. I don't know what it is, you know. Maybe if somebody would tell me it's as good as Peaky Blinders, then I jump on it. Well, how how many shows are as good as Peaky Blinders? Very few. That's that's why that's yeah. why I compare it to. Uh, that's why that's one of my benchmarks. Yeah. Because that's that's just a, a superb, superb show. And and also uh, another show that uh, that I that I really like that the second season just came out. Um, is the bear if you if you i tried to get through it and i can't oh my god it's so good i know it look everybody says wonderful things about it and i'm trying to get into it and i get i'm thinking i'm up to episode three now oh keep watching man it's like popcorn and every episode you go oh i gotta have another one i'll really? have another one. okay well I it's only two seasons ten episodes nine episodes each something like that half an hour very quick but the acting and the writing is so good I'll have to go back to it. You know, I, 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 not only do I trust you, I trust all the other people that say it's good. The, the, uh, the thing is with starting it is that it's, it's kind of a preposterous kind of thing. You don't care about some guy who goes in to take care of, of his brother's failing sandwich shop. It's just, who cares really? Yeah. But it's not that. It's about the characters. It's really a character driven show and it's really good. In the same vein, as Ted Lasso, if you've seen Ted Lasso, I and people like say, it. "What do I care about an American who goes to?" Uh, I have you know, tried to get in to run a, a soccer club in in England, but that's about characters. Watch that show; that's a great show. 
No. And, and there's there's a reason it, it gets accolades. Okay, it's well, let's, let's, get to, let's get something else where I was going with all of this was. Where were you going with all those hours? Well, I rewatched yesterday Citizen Kane. I just got a new pristine print of that. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it was pristine print of it. And I was watching Citizen Kane. Uh, and after it was over, I said, for the time, a very good movie, a great movie, innovative. Right. You know, uh, yes. it, it, it reset the, the, the bar for what was the grammar of movies. Okay. Uh, he did, it was amazing. And it was done by, he was, he, that was the first movie he had ever made. He didn't know how to make movies. And so he made a movie the way he thought a movie should be made. Right. And so that's why it was so different and why it was so innovative. But as I watched it, I went, by today's standards, is it innovative? You know, it was good for the time. I say the same thing. Yeah, it was good for the time, but it's, it's, it's not as good a movie as we would like to think, but it was as good a movie as they could make at that time. Certainly far beyond what was expected at the time, I would think. Yeah. Because, I mean, it was a solid story. It was compelling. Uh, the acting was great. The visuals were tremendous. Mm -hmm. Is it a great movie now? It still holds up. Oh, it's, it's good. It's very good. But, but not, I'll tell you, you know, uh, people kind of give me a quizzical look when I say this. And they asked me, what's the best movie ever made? And I said, well, it isn't Citizen Kane. Loaded question. Bad question. Well, it's a bad question because you say, what kind of movie? You know, I mean, am I supposed to compare those movies to the stupid Marvel Universe movies? I don't think so. You be careful what you say about those Marvel Universe movies. Yeah, There's a lot right. of people that love those. I know, I know. But uh, I got to tell you, the best movie I've ever seen, that's maybe the best way to put it. The best uh, from every aspect. Bride of Frankenstein. I just watched that the other day with my Is wife. Is that not a great movie? Uh, it's okay. No, but I, there, I, it, there, there's a I, I expected I expected more, and I've seen it before, but I expected more. I'd forgotten. But there's the, a lot of silliness in there. Yeah, that, but that, did, you that, get, did you get the second level that they made it on? That this, everybody in that movie, with the exception of Boris Karloff, was gay. Uh, no, I didn't as get As was sense. the director and the right who was the, the writer as well. Yes, James that I knew. Whale. Well. Uh, it is a picture about being not accepted. It, it, it has, you know, he may as well have been a gay person, the monster. The monster? Yeah. Because he That's was being idea. treated, at least for that place and time, like that. And they, so there's there's this second level in, in Bride of Frankenstein that most people never catch. And I just think it's a brilliant movie. It's brilliant in its photography, in its, in its absurdities, in its, uh, in its abstractness. I mean, it's amazing. Just amazing. It's a good movie. Yeah. But I would I wouldn't say it's 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 brilliant. I don't think so. And by the way, the monster not gay. He well, he desperately wanted to have a wife. He, he no, no, he I'm, I'm not right. saying he's gay, but oh. he is a surrogate for a gay person. Okay. And the right. kind of life a gay person had to live in America at that time, you know, and being shunned by everybody because nobody understands him. You know, I mean, uh, how many how many people who watch either the original Frankenstein and especially Bride of Frankenstein don't have sympathy for the monster. Does it have to be gay? Can it be just anybody who's not accepted? Well, uh, yes. Yeah. But I'm saying it was done by a bunch of gay people, so that was the subtext. Okay. Okay? Oh. Great so that's your, best, that's your best movie of all time? I, I would say it's better than Citizen Kane. I don't know that I would say that. Yeah. Well, of course you wouldn't say it's that because movie. you'll never agree with me. No, I'll, I'll agree with you on some things. One day we'll find out what those things are. <laughs> One day we will come up with something we both agree That's right. on. That's correct. <laughs> I would, you see, I, I'd put a movie like Raging Bull above both of those films. Raging Bull's very good. 
you know that Very that to good. me is a, is a tremendous film that that will always mm -hmm. stand out as being a great film. And that didn't. We're starting to run out of time here, but it didn't win the Academy Award that year. What won that year? I don't know. Terms of endearment. Okay, well, you see, I wouldn't. Put that uh, who in cares? Place. When's the last time you went back to watch Terms of Endearment? You know, I couldn't and, even tell you what it's and, about. And when the when that decade was over, people said they made a list of the best films of the decade. Top of the list, Raging Bull. Raging Bull, yeah. In terms Absolutely. of endearment, probably somewhere around ten. You know, yeah. ridiculous. Wow. Hey, listen, we've run out of. We, you, you know, time is expensive. Because we use so much of it, and then we're gone. Let me uh, turn you on to a man who will change your mind about time. His name is Carlo Rovelli. He is a uh, physicist, a quantum physicist. Mm -hmm. Go on YouTube and watch. There's an, an hour-long explanation of why time doesn't exist. Then we won't run out next time. What, what's his name? Carlo Ravelli. He's an Italian quantum physicist. Okay, I will try and watch it. Renowned one. You know, it's always a delight being with you, my friend. As it is me with you. And uh, that uh, there is Albert Reynoso. Bravo! Hey. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Yeah. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh yeah. Okay. All righty. Okay. That's uh, that's uh, our good friend Albert Reynoso. Okay. Interesting. Anyway, hello everybody. I'm a little. I'm a little out of it today. I, you, I always say that I'm a little out of it because I always want the excuse. If it's last night, I didn't get enough sleep. Why? I can't begin to tell you. All right. Um, uh, I, 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 okay, my back is killing me. I don't know why. I don't have, normally have back problems. I, I leave that up to Marjorie, all right, and not up to, uh, um, um, uh, you know, me. Uh, but I, my back has just been killing me. I mean, just, so last night, uh, Marjorie takes these pain pills for her, for her back, okay, and uh, I said to her, uh, 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 do you have one of those pain pills? Could I use it? So she said, uh, sure, here. And she cut it in half. I just did a half of it because I, 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 you know, I didn't want to get really loopy, all right? So I take the pill, and then at that, at later that night, I, I get ready to go to sleep, and I am, like, awake all night. Or at least I felt I was awake. I know I did sleep because, you know, I'd wake up and go, gee, two hours have passed. Oh, I must have gone to sleep. But I just, I just didn't get a good night's sleep. And then I had to get up at uh, 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 9.15 this morning so we could make a 10 o'clock appointment to get our, what do you call it, shots, our uh, uh, COVID shots. Let me see here. Is there any, is there, there we go. There it is. Uh, it's a, uh, that's, that's where I got it. Anyway, but we, we now you, we, you know it was shifted because we got turned down the other day from going and getting our COVID shots. Uh, and the reason was they said that we lack of supply. Well, we come to find out that there wasn't a lack of supply everywhere else, but they just didn't send the stuff to Harlem. Okay, so anyway. They remade the thing. Well, my, does my face look, what color does that look? Okay, here, wait a minute, that's white. Now, see, I'm trying to do a white balance thing. It won't, I'm, I seem to be red tonight. Oh, well, anyway. Where were we? Oh, yeah, so I, um, um, uh, so we had to, ha they had to reschedule when they were going to do it, all right? Uh, and uh, they rescheduled it for today. Okay, so now we go up there after ha having been ready to go to the other one a few days ago to go now to go get our, our shots. We go up there, they process everything and they say, oh, well, your insurance doesn't cover this. We want our insurance is Medicare. The government always covers 
COVID-19. Well, they don't hear. Apparently, they don't, didn't make a deal with Rite Aid. <sighs> so we're frustrated. So we got to go home. Marjorie gets a call about an hour later from, from, the, um, from Rite Aid. Oh, it was our mistake. There was something wrong with the computers. Okay. So can you, can you come back later today? And we said, oh, how about 2.30? Okay, fine. So we go back at 2.30 and we get our shots. And uh, now we both have our, uh, not only did we get the, the COVID-19 shot, the most recent one, but we got the last one as well. It's in the same shot now. I don't get it. Anyway, all day long today, about five o'clock, I started feeling ill. I'm feeling like I'm sick now. And I know that what it is, it's, it's the damn flu shot, you know. So that's my life, you know, never, never as easy, okay. Now I have uh, Charlie Wallace here, okay, and I have Jeff Stein, but there's somebody else here by the name of uh, Mark Herquez. I'm going to put him on here without me going yet to these other guys, and let's see what comes up, okay? Um, Mark, are you there? Are you there, Mark? Mark, are you there? Oh, there he is. That's, is that you? Is that really you, Mark? Uh, unmute yourself, Mark. You're muted. You're muted. I can ask you to unmute, okay? You see, unmute. I'm, uh, yeah, just uh, what happened to him? I just unmute your ear. Go down to where it says audio. Hmm. Huh. Oh, well, hello, everybody else. Oh, boy. Well. Okay. I'm a little skeptical you're here. You're a little skeptical here? Okay. <laughs> I, I'm not, I haven't put the, uh, the thing up yet, but I'm thinking that uh, we should get rid of them. Do you, you agree? Huh? Uh, I, I don't know. It, Let's see here. Let me let me see here. Uh, uh, well, uh, put 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 him waiting room. Oh, I can just remove him. What the hell? Wait a minute. Here here is he coming back? No, he's not coming back. Okay. I don't want to report this to Zoom because then then they send me all the stuff I have to fill out and stuff like that, you know. But here's Alan. Okay. So anyway, my back's been killing me. So Welcome to the club. Why? Do, do you normally have back problems? I've had back problems for 40 years. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, well, welcome to the club, huh? Yeah. Me too. You too? Yeah. I can't bend down to lift up the toilet lid. Yeah, every once in a while. You know, so I, I have yeah. my cane. I've been using the cane because also my knee, the... the um, uh, knee thing, the uh, meniscus, is hurting me like hell for some reason. So I'm, 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 I'm just a mess. I just, you know. Oh, uh, wait till you get to my age. Am I too red? <laughs> is my face too red tonight? It is red. It's a little red, yeah. You're a well-read yeah. person. I'm a well-read person. Let me, let me see. Oh, that's <laughs> cute. <laughs> let me see. Where, where is the, uh, uh, where, where, where's the uh, thing here? I'm, let me go here. And then let me go over to here and, and turn off my uh, white balance. Let's see what happens here. Well, there we go. That's, uh, that's even of, redder. You know, whiter, whiter. Well, wait a minute. I'll try to get a little orange. Oh, no. I'm a little redder now. Oh, boy. There we that's go. Better. That's better. That's better. much better. And then I lower the saturation, and we should be fine. Yeah. Oh, you're good now. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Now I, now I look great. Now I look healthy. So anyway, um, how are you doing, Jeff? Okay? You know, pretty good today. Surprising. Why? It, it was the weather causing your problems? The weather was beautiful today. Today it was compared. beautiful, but yesterday, yeah. the last couple of days, that's why I think my back has been hurting. And I, that, you know, I just wish it would just... That coldness and rainy. Yeah. yeah. It was terrible. I know. Every day. I never used to have that problem, though. 
could be any kind of weather and I wouldn't be mm. affected by it, you know? Oh, well, you know, so, what, what are you doing? Are you doing a little violin thing there? Yeah, yeah. a little violin. <laughs> a little violin thing. <laughs> At least you can eat. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you a story now. Why can't you eat? I'm going to tell you a story. Colonoscopy. And, and you're, oh. all, you're all going to love this story, mm -hmm. okay? And it has to do with um, Trump. Oh. It mm -hmm. has to do with New York City and the state oh, yeah. of New York. And the fact that yesterday a judge here in New York, what happened is he's up for, they, 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 they put him up for all kind of malfeasance and fraud and things like mm. that, right? Not a criminal charge. It's a civil charge, okay? So in a civil charge, you have a judge. And the judge listens to the case. And then you don't bring in a jury. The judge makes his decision as to how he thinks it goes, okay? So he can also do one other thing, and that's the thing that this judge did which was uh, kind of incredible, uh, he did a summary judgment. And a summary judgment is where you don't even go through the full trial. He just had all the stuff that the state sent him and gave him, and he looked at it, and he came to the conclusion that uh, Trump should lose his LLC in New York State. He should lose a lot of other things and should not be allowed to e practice... Uh, building anything in the state of New York, okay? Yep. By you know, the way, the panel's not showing on YouTube. Oh, I, you know why? Because I haven't put them on yet. See, I, uh, you know, that's how goofy I am today. There they are. I kept them off because I, I didn't, want to, want, didn't want to see what that, that person was up to. Hello, Steve Fox. So anyway, so this thing, story comes through yesterday, and we, of course, Marjorie and I are doing handstands here, you know? Yeah. Finally, after all these years, they managed to nail this mother, okay? He's been doing, he's been, and by the way, for all of you out there who, who think he's a billionaire, think again, okay? <laughs> According to what the judge was able to ascertain, whatever he said he had, he didn't have. But the reason why this was highly illegal was because he was using those numbers of how much money he had to go borrow money from banks. Mm -hmm. And when you lie to a bank about your worth in order to get some money, that's that's criminal. That's fraud. Huh? Okay? And he so, did that a lot. So I'm really delight, delighted. Um, and uh, I'm sure we can all, we all want to take our hat off to the judge. Yep. If only we knew the judge, we'd probably go up and hug him, right? <laughs> or, I know the judge. He was wow. the judge in my case in this apartment. Oh, oh no. He oh. was, a, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, uh, doc, uh, Judge Arthur Engerin. And uh, he was my judge uh, on our case. And very nice guy, by the way, I have to tell you. Really, really very decent, sweet guy. Um, and uh, it, it really, so that, that's my little, my little story. I, now I have no other coincidence left in life, and I can't, won't be able to win the lottery or anything because I've just blown it all on this. The only other time that happened to me was when uh, they had the uh, subway shooter, uh, Bernard Getz, and mm -hmm. they were looking for this guy, and they finally found him, and he lived in the apartment house that I lived in here in New York. Mm -hmm. And somebody called me up and said, hey, he lived in your apartment house. Uh, uh, he, uh, it, it, I think he lived uh, below you, uh, weren't you in, uh, above you or something? He said, weren't you in, in eight, uh, seven I? And I went, no, I was in eight I. He says, and God damn it, that's where he lives. <laughs> if I hadn't moved out, he might not have moved in, might not have gone down to the subway and shot that guy <laughs> who to this day is in a wheelchair. It's all your fault. Yeah. So I, that, that I thought was just getting rid of all coincidence that I could possibly have. But, you know. Well, and you're in the in, middle of it all bit. Huh? In the news, Donald Trump did this, did that. Pretty soon they're going to blame Jimmy Hoffa on Trump. <laughs> well, he probably did it. He, he probably, probably did do it. Or if he didn't do it, he knows who did. I hope you enjoyed chocolate chip cookies there, Charlie. 
Oh, you, I'm sorry. You can't eat right now. I'm just a mean person. <laughs> Wait, but why can't he eat? You I'm having a colonoscopy on Friday, so I only <laughs> choose in oh. jello. Oh, on Friday. Well, Friday, you only have to fast uh, 24 hours beforehand. No, I can't eat solid food. Really? Yeah. Because you pretty much blow it out of you with all the stuff you got to take. Yeah, well, that's what he told me. Friday's the day after tomorrow, so starting today, I can't eat. Yeah, now there's Lachlan Motorham. Oh, yeah. here we go. No, I don't believe it. I'm just, <laughs> they, I, I'm going to remove him. Goodbye, Mr. Mort, Mo, Mortarham. You know. <laughs> Motorham. You know. I mean, when well, I Charlie, I mean, are are you on the the real thing or are you doing the, you know, the work around as far as the whole? What do you mean the work? Or, what do you mean the work? I didn't know there was a work around for a cold. There is. Around? Well, no, you don't have to drink that, you know, 10 gallons of whatever. No, no, just, so I don't have to do that. I've got two pint sized things that I've got. to. Well, drink there are these little bo before. these little bottles and I forget what yeah. they're called. Magnesium citrate. Magnesium yeah. citrate. Mm -hmm. And if if anybody here has to go out and have a colonoscopy, uh, the magnesium citrate works just as well and is not yeah. as disgusting as having to drink a gallon of that swill. I think that's why I have to do the soft, the uh, Jello and all that stuff and broth. Oh, by the way, too. make sure uh, make sure that your your Jello isn't red Jello. Right. It's got to be orange or yellow or not even orange. I think green or oh. yellow. Yeah. I think I think you cannot have red, orange or purple. Or purple. It yeah. looks like blood in, in your yeah. cold. So I've, I've, never, sure. I've never had this to, to um, um, fast that much. I just had to fast a little bit, you know, like 20. 20 He's not fasting, though. He's just cutting back on uh, things that are h hard to digest right now. Yeah. Tomorrow. Well, uh, if you I can have pasta today, just noodles and stuff. I can have things that are hard to digest. Let's get back to talking about Trump. Uh, yeah. <laughs> how, how did you guys feel when you heard about this? I cheered, jumped up and cheered. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to rush out and get a colonoscopy now. <laughs> Peace. This, uh, but he really, he really nailed him. And supposedly, yeah. when they were when they were pleading the whole thing, Trump's lawyers, he finally started pounding his fist on his on his uh, what do you call it, table or whatever is up there, the desk, and said, "Don't do that." He said, "You're you're 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 being bad to the profession." Oh, yes. you know, uh, you're not living up to your profession. You're being terrible. And he finally hit them with something, hit the lawyers with something, saying, yeah, you're lying. you're getting up here and lying about him. You know. Um, Here's yeah. the good thing, Charlie, is you won't need to go to the restroom for about four or five days afterwards. <laughs> My lawyer sent me the complete uh, transcript of his thing, and uh -huh. some of it's very funny. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he... You know, he laces it with things like, if you believe that, you'll believe anything, that kind of stuff, you know. Wow. And uh, he just said that, uh, that uh, you know, that uh, he, he was, what, what Trump tried to do, this was interesting. If you were a bank, he would show you how much billions of dollars he was worth. And if you were the government, he would say, well, I don't have to pay any taxes because I don't have, I didn't make that much money. Yeah. And and basically the judge said, you can't have it both ways. You know, you can't lie for one reason and then lie for another. You got to be consistent in your lying. Oh, now Ronnie McNutt has entered the waiting room. Forget him. <laughs> hey, Ronnie. You know, I think that's Phil Meyer's new handle. <laughs> Ronnie Ooh. McNutt. No, he, Phil has not called the show anymore. No. Yeah. Uh, you know why. Why? Uh, because he doesn't like being told he's talking over people. What? He didn't say that was the reason. He to told me. me that's the reason. Well, but that's what he does. 
Yeah. I know. So then don't <laughs> talk over people. <laughs> right. Uh, he blames, he says everybody else talks over people, but I can't do it. I don't well, think, I, I don't know of anybody on this program who <laughs> talks over people, you know. A little bit, me. You, I never do a little bit. Not, not, a, but you're, you've been better lately, you know. So if, if, if people think you're talking over them a lot, uh, then just uh, back off a little bit, you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but uh, I'd but, like to see Phil back on. It drives everybody's blood pressure up. Well, I don't, you know, I I don't know. I have people that write me and they're just happy without him. <laughs> you know, uh, and the reason is they feel that because he talks over people, he's disruptive. You know, yeah. And you know, I've asked him in the past to not be disruptive, and he's kind of turned around and for a while. And then all of a sudden he turned around the yeah. other way. I mean, I do miss him, you know. I considered him a friend, but, you know. Oh, here's Kevin. Kevin McNutface. No, this is Kevin. McNutface. There he is. Yeah, it is. That is definitely <laughs> Kevin. Mm -hmm. yeah, Hello, Kevin. Hi, Alex. How are you? Hi, Hi everybody. Good, good. So you heard about my little coincidence? Uh, I didn't. I just uh, got oh, well. The, the judge who went at who nailed Trump yesterday. Uh huh. That was the the judge I had for my case. Oh really? About the apartment? Yeah. Oh geez, that's funny. Yeah. 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 So, I, I'm so happy for him. You know, I think he's having a great time. <laughs> right. I bet. <laughs> We ought to take him out to dinner or something. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. <clears throat> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I, I would write him, but I have, we do have another a little bit of work still to do with him, and so I don't want to be in contact with him for that right. reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I would write him a note and say, "Hey, judge." Can you get me his autograph? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> On a t-shirt. You're my new hero, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it, what he did is it was a summary judgment. And he's uh, he's allowed to do that. If he has all the facts of the case before him, because he's going to be able, he, he's going to have to, in the end, uh, make the decision. It's a civil case. He's going to have to make the decision uh, of what, you know, what it's all about. And uh, uh, so he, uh, he can do a summary judgment right now like he did. And then on Monday, they're going to hear the rest of the case and a lot of the other particulars, and they might nail Trump on more stuff. But then in the end, it's the judge's decision to figure out whether he's done anything wrong or not. See? So, so that's, that's all I know about the law. You know, so... <laughs> So anybody have anything they want to talk about? You were talking about backs when I came on. Did you hurt your back? I don't know what I did to it. All of a sudden, oh, it, ju it just started hurting. You know? Wow. You know? And I don't know what to do to stop it. I take uh, heavy ibuprofen. That kind of helps. You know? Uh, but uh, uh, I don't. I don't get it. You know? Because usually my back, you know, oh, I have a little problem. Sometimes when I'm walking, it gets a little hinky, you know. <clears throat> but uh, I, I don't have a back problem. Marjorie's the one with the back problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and here's what oh. I get. My back is killing me, right? It really is. And mm -hmm. on top of that, so's the knee. That's killing me, the meniscus, all right? She goes, you don't know pain. I have pain. And I'm going, I know you have pain, but can't you for a moment sympathize with the fact that I'm now joined your club? You know? Mm -hmm. No. Doesn't no. care. You're too minimal. No, her, her oh. pain is much worse than my pain. Yes. Uh, the only what difference. What does she is, have? Huh? What does she have that's going on? She, um, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it, it's her back, you know. And she's had she has a couple Alex of her husband, her daughter, her husband. Hmm? <laughs> what? 
I said, she her has, husband. <laughs> yeah, her husband. Yeah, her husband is a pain in the back. As a husband, you're a pain in the ass, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's that, good, Jeffrey. I'm trying, yeah. Man. <laughs> that's wonderful, Jeff. Did, didn't she earn her back know. working out or something? Because she always went to the no, exercise. No, she, yeah, supposedly, she that. said she was dropped as a child. That I believe. Okay, oh. you know, that I, that I believe. But she was dropped as a child on her back, and that she's always had kind of a not great back. All right, but you know, I mean, she also did a lot. If she was, come on, if if she if she made up for my lack of athletic ability, oh. she did everything. She ran. She did. She was well. She was hooked on endorphins. Okay, mm -hmm. that's really what it was all about. And so she did a lot of workout, working out, and so on and so forth. And I say to her. Yeah, it's really healthy stuff. Look what it did to you. <laughs> you know, and most people who, what? Oh, I was going to ask, did you work out too? or? I worked out for about an hour and a half once, I think. Uh, <laughs> once. No, actually, what, what happened was I, start, I started working out. I, because I, I got into a thing uh, at the radio station in San Francisco where I... Uh, they, they, these people came along and said, if you'll go and work out and meet certain levels of working out, we will then give $5,000 to your favorite charity. So I did that, okay? And after I did that, I noticed that the first time in my life, I kind of had muscles. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and um, so, so I What kept, are these? Hmm? You said, what are these? Yeah, yeah. And so I, I then, my girlfriend and I used to just go to this place and work out like three days a week because it's always easier to work out if you've got somebody to work out with, you know. And your wrist gets a break. <laughs> nope. <laughs> anyway. I got it, I got it Alan. Uh, uh, it, Thank you, it, Kevin. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't it, all that good. Thank you. I'd have, I'd have you explain it, Kevin, but if you have to diagram a joke, it isn't worth telling. Correct. Okay. So anyway, so um, I worked out, you know, and I, I, even once I was having sex with some woman, and she said, wow, you've got a great body. And I went, what? <laughs> I never heard that in my life. You know, I had the, the, the body of a violinist's son. <laughs> you know, I mean, was this the uh, blind girlfriend that you're talking about? No, 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 no. This was a fully sighted one. <laughs> oh boy. So anyway, oh, boy. so you know, so I mean, I uh, so I worked out for uh, maybe about six months of my life, and then one day I said to myself, I broke up with the girlfriend to begin with, so I didn't have somebody to go in with me. But then I also said, you know. This is really, what am I doing, you know? I'm just sitting here, I'm getting on a, a stationary bike and pedaling for a half hour, and it's not going anywhere. You know, I'm not seeing anything. So I went out and got a real bike, you know, and I used that. But I just said, it's useless. All this working out is just absolutely useless. And nobody's ever proved to me that it makes you healthier. I mean, look at me, I'm, I'm 83, I'm going on 84. And I, I didn't work out, so to what do I owe the mm -hmm. my longevity? Probably uh, having lots of sex. I'll, I'll just say that, you know. <laughs> sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yep. Well, you know, I, I think probably what you did before, you know, to lead, lead you to where you are now is where you are. I mean, you're fit. I mean, if I look at you and see you, you know, I'm fit. Are you out of your mind? Oh, come on. <laughs> you can you can still walk a mile or two. No problem. See? Even though you got a cane. Well, I can't. It's I really can't. Yeah, but you can. You've done it. Well, I did it the other day. I actually walked a, So there a you mile. go. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, more than a mile. Walked about a mile and a half. There you go. You know, but yeah. I can't do it lately. You do know? you look at that on your watch? I mean, do you look at you know how oh, much yeah, you I walk. The, I get the watch thing. It tells yeah. me how much I've walked. You know, and you know. I know my wife does it all the time. She's she's got she's short, so she's got that little stride, you know. And she always does her steps. Yeah. yeah. And I always tell her she's cheating because 
she can get you know twice as many steps as anyone else because she's got a short. Well, you see, stride. Everybody does that. The, the, I did thirty-two thousand steps today. The, so well, the good you, thing, you know, good thing about twice the, as many as anybody else. Well, the good thing about the watch is is that it's reading the GPS. Yeah. And so consequently, when it says I went a mile, it it knows I went a mile. It, it uh, checked mm -hmm. out the mile via the GPS. Uh, but I just can't. I today, if you ask me, I, we we walked up to the. I think I maybe walked a total of almost a mile today up to the, um, where do you call it, the uh, drugstore, and then we went over to eat, and we went to the drugstore <laughs> twice, so maybe. Well, it's your step count, too, that, that helps if you look at that. Yeah. 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 Because that tells you know, really how many steps you took and all that. Yeah. I don't well, know. Does it have my it, steps it, in But there? it led up to where you are now, is right. what I'm saying. Right, you know, and you know, for all the workout you did, no, I, cycle. I, well, I said this to Richard Simmons once, and Richard almost <laughs> swallowed his tongue when I said it. <laughs> I said, "Well, I don't work out," and he said, "Well, Alex, why don't you work out?" And I said, "Because I figure if you don't use your body, it won't wear out." There's something to be said for that. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know something? Maybe I was right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a sedentary life is what's had me live this long. Yeah, maybe, but look at me. I'm I probably weigh double what you weigh. I'd say triple. Okay. <laughs> how much can we ask you how much you weigh? Sure. I was on the scale on Monday. I weigh three hundred and twenty two pounds. Oh. Which is actually down from 354 pounds at the height of COVID. Don't really? get so I'm out. I'm out walking, and I've cut back in in some of my snack foods. Just some, not all. You know what is happening with me? I only eat like one meal a day. Yeah, and, me too. And, and I'm full. And, then and it's I'm snack full. all day long. No, and I'm full, and I don't even snack. That's it. Not you. And I haven't lost weight, but I haven't gained it either. So, you know. But what do you eat, I mean, per day? I mean, what, what is the meal that you have? Dinner. And That's then I, I have a raisin danish in the morning. That's a, kind of a tradition around the house here. She has one, I have one. A raisin danish. And that's it. You know, I, I, you know and then I, then I have dinner, and I, halfway into dinner, I'm full. I don't know why that is. I worry about it. But then again, uh, I, I'm told as you get older, you eat less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. But you like your coffee. I only do my coffee when I'm doing this show oh. or when I'm doing an interview. Uh, I don't know why. I think it makes me peppier, but it doesn't, you know. You could do it like Tony. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm also on the almost the last day of my antibiotics. And I am okay. so nauseous. Because <laughs> hmm. when you get towards the end of, 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 of antibiotics, that's when they really affect you the worst. You know? And that's probably why you're not eating right now. Yeah. You know, that could have, well, no, I, I had the problem before this. But that may have something to do with it. Yeah. But. Uh, oh. Can I ask you, did you have your last COVID shot? Yeah, I just got a, I just got a COVID shot yeah, today. Exactly. Okay. How did that affect you? Well, I, I was telling people I got it today, and I feel I'm like... I'm sorry, I missed it. I feel like crap tonight. You oh. Know, I feel somewhat a little, you know, puny, as I like mm. to describe it. I had a week ago, and I was like, almost like a headache. Really? And then that was just that day, right? And then the next day, you were Oh, it kind of lasted. Oh, really? Thank you. It lasted you. for. Uh, okay. Well, I, I won't. Know, five I won't, days. I won't, or oh, really? Yeah. You got one today, Alex? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. My daughter, my daughter's friend up at uh, U of O, her roommate got COVID day before yesterday. And I go, oh, great. Here we go. There you go. But it wasn't her roommate. It was her friend's roommate that she's been hanging around with. And I said, just mm. go in there and spray the hell out of it with Lysol. <laughs> I don't know. Does Lysol do anything? I don't know. Probably not. 
<laughs> Probably. It, not. Say, it says on the can that if you spray it, leave it wet for ten minutes, it'll kill COVID and E. coli. And, yeah, it's been well, saying remember, that for you, years. You know, if you remember, and let's not discuss whether any of this was right or wrong, because I don't want to get. Yeah, I don't know exactly. I, I it, just read what the cam says. What the what? Cam says. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is that um, um, we did all kinds of things during COVID. First of all, any packages I got, we left out in the foyer here and sprayed with Lysol and yeah. then didn't open them for f three days. Yeah. <laughs> you remember that, folks? Uh-huh. Yeah, I know you did it. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you remember when you doubled up on the masks? I you wore, two, you wore two masks instead of one? Never. I never wore that. You heard that was wow. good. There's a lot of things they're beginning to see, probably, although I disagree with some of it. Uh, I was watching Bill Maher, and he was saying, well, you know, I, I, I don't think the mask did much of anything. And I went, you know, why wow. tempt fate? If using a mask, right, is going, to, uh, is going to just keep you from having somebody else sneeze in your face. It's worth doing, especially during those times. And and I, if you remember back then, the flu was down. Well, yeah, I, I was, but I was, I was afraid of dying. You know, yeah. I didn't leave the yeah. house for three months. Right. You know, so I mean, uh, it was a very fearful time. And up here at at Mount Sinai, the hospital was full. It was absolutely full. You couldn't get another person in there. You know. So, I mean, it, it, we've come a long way, but still. Well, they've learned how to treat it. Huh? And they've, they've learned partly how to treat it. Yeah. Pax, Paxlovid is a game changer. It, it, Paxlovid has probably it's, saved more lives than anything. There's some people that say it's, it's bad, though. They, they, they yell and scream, well, that's bad for you. Don't do yeah, Paxlovid. Not everybody's going to. You could take a, 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 a sugar pill and be told that it's Paxlovid and have a reaction to it placebo yeah. effect i mean you know yeah. not everybody's going to get along with every drug that's great <laughs> oh, God. that was my favorite <laughs> <laughs> yeah boy that, that'd take care of it it was always this too yeah oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, that's great you know what, though, there, there was a, uh, there was a lot going on in those days. I mean, we had all kinds of theories about stuff, you know, and and some were really bothersome. Ooh, my back! Hold on a second. Ah, Ooh. I just had to reposition wow, myself. Huh? So it really is bad now. It's yeah. not. It's not good now. If I get up and I walk around a little bit, it it gets better. But when I'm down? sitting here for a couple hours, forget it. Maybe a muscle, maybe. No. What? Maybe a muscle spasm? Maybe no, it could be no, a turret? No, it's it's a it's a backache. Oh Dr. Tony. You know. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Uh, maybe if the weather the weather was nice today though. I shouldn't shouldn't have been hurting gorgeous. me as much. It was oh. gorgeous today. But anyway, so you know, I mean I, I think we've come a long way uh with COVID, but when it was at its height, I mean you know, especially me. I mean, I'm at my age. It was a death sentence if you got it. Yeah. You know, but we've learned how to deal with it. We've learned how to. Uh, there's the people are still dying of it. You know, if you don't go out and get the shots and you don't uh, maybe wear masks in certain situations, there's a chance you could get it. So at least get the get the uh, the vaccination, because then if you do get it, which you might. I've had vaccinations. I've gotten it twice. Okay, so but it, I didn't. Mask, I didn't get it terribly. You know. And the way a mask works is, I, and this is the, you, the people can look it up in medical journals if they want or whatever. A mask really protects the other people. That's right. When you cough right. and stuff. That's right. And so if you're wearing, if you and I are in a room and we're both wearing a mask, we're really protecting each other. Well, you're wearing a mask for me, and I'm wearing a mask for you. That's right. Yeah. A lot of people believe because they're wearing a mask, it's going to protect them. Yeah. And that's not the way masks work. But so. if, if everybody thinks it's gone, <clears throat> it yeah. ain't. Boy, it where ain't. are they wrong? You know. Now, Hopefully the Republicans are thinking that right now. 
<laughs> no, everybody's been relaxed is what's going on. It's that yeah. everybody has relaxed their fears mm -hmm. and are like, okay, everything's fine. Well, they're getting you know? too loosey-goosey with it. You know, yep. yeah. it's like they've just kind of gone, eh, well, you know, we got the Paxlovid. And, uh, you know, if, if you have had the vaccination, probably if you get it, it's not going to be terrible. Although the one I got, the last time I got it, it was, I did not feel that well that night when I was trying to sleep. I had a hard time sleeping. And then the next day, I, re I took a test and by golly, I had, I had COVID. So luckily, I had a woman staying with us who's a doctor. So, so she yeah. simply ordered up Paxlovid for me immediately and threw a mask at me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, and and uh, it, uh, it, the Paxlovid was a game changer. Yep. Just Even if you haven't been vaccinated, it'll work on you. Well, what are people arguing about Paxlovid? What are some of the claims that people say, oh, you're going to, I don't know. No, I don't know. Just, I mean, they, some they people stay through it all, and they like, say like that I'm not going to go ahead and take this because I really don't need to. And then they, they it, it's it's elongated, mm -hmm. you know, where Paxlovid shortens it, mm -hmm. and um, these well, people also, go for a week. Or early on, I mean. before we had Paxlovid and 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 shots, and when we had the Delta variant, which was probably the most deadly variant that we've had come along. Um, you know, you would get you know, some some people would get sick for two or three days and then get better, and five days later they'd end up in the hospital on an intubator. So Paxlovid is stopping a lot of that from from progressing. Well, it's amazing how easily <clears throat> it it uh, slows the progression of it, you know, it and, does. and turns the tide on it. So, <clears throat> it does. But uh, right. what I'm wondering is that they're talking about long haul. That it's a lot more serious than than most people thought. It is. Uh, uh, have, do you have long haul at all? Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I, a bunch of my friends do, and they're having some difficulties, like nobody's business, and is it's really taking effect on them, especially with this latest um, variant that has come out. It's really just taking a toll on people, and and these are people who've been vaccinated too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They see, just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean you're not going to come down with it, but you're not going to get it as badly as you would have gotten it. Okay. I wonder how many of those people wear a mask everywhere they go. I do. I yeah. I'm loosey goosey on the mask, you know. Yeah. I, I've I, and I shouldn't be. Like I went into a you know I went into Rite Aid today. I probably should have put a mask on, you know. Uh, certainly when I go over to the hospital. Um, they they don't uh, require you to wear masks anymore. They don't require you to wear. I'm going to wear, I'm gonna wear a mask because where do sick people go? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, and if you're going to wow. get get it or even get it, you know, the one thing I found with the masks, okay, you can say what you will about them. Some people go, oh, they didn't do anything. Uh, you know, yes, they did, but you can think that all you want to. But the one thing that it did do is that during COVID, I never got any colds. No, yeah, that's what they're saying, Bruce, down. Yeah. Cold and flu season, remember they said it was markedly down when the yeah. masks were up. Because people were wearing masks. And this is what yeah. people do in, in foreign countries. Like you go to China, if somebody gets a, gets a cold, he wears a mask to work. Mm. It's just, that's what you do. <clears throat> and uh, I, I just think that we've never, yeah, but here we're so damn selfish. We're going, I hate wearing the masks. It's so, yeah, you know. Well, so here, you know, here's the, the, the upside is obvious to wearing the mask. The downside for me is it steams up my glasses a little bit. <laughs> I would rather have a little steamy glasses than COVID. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the point is that. Stop being so selfish, people. Put a mask on. And, and, well, what's that old saying that a uh, you know an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? And this mm -hmm. is really oh, in this a, case, it's sure that that cure. sure stands true, huh? Yeah. yeah. But I'm just thinking about all we were doing in those days to prevent it, or what we thought would prevent it, like me spraying my packages down. <laughs> but, it, you know. Well, let me ask you this, Alex. Mm -hmm. So going back into the radio days. 
did you find that people who were spraying Lysol over the microphone? Oh, yeah, we did spray them. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Every radio station, we had a bottle of Lysol, a camel Lysol, and when you were through with your shift, you'd spray mm -hmm. the microphone. Yeah, yeah. Because the germs were going to jump off the mic a foot away and, and catch Let's, the let's put it this way. If you were to smell that microphone, yeah. oh. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Yeah. yeah there you go. I mean, when you have people, various people going in mm -hmm. and breathing on a microphone, it's you know, it. you know uh, 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 it's not a bad idea to spray the microphone with Lysol. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that I did. You do you do it all the time? Now we have this formula that we rub on the microphone, and um, mm -hmm. and it, you know, just sanitizes everything. But you know. That's that's what we do now. Now, have you have you been doing it all the time or since yes. COVID? Yes, all the time. All the time. Okay. Because well, since uh, let's go with this. Um, since COVID, all the way to now. Because COVID, I would think if you're in an announce booth, okay, which is an enclosed room, soundproof, hermetically sealed, so it doesn't get any sound from the outside, double glass. Yeah. And you go in there, and somebody's just been in there and had a cold. Whether or not you spray the microphone, you're in a germ-laden room. You are, but if someone were, I'll do. I'll say this because this happened exactly what you just said. That someone was sick, and we completely went through that whole studio, desanitized that whole thing. I mean, this is during COVID time. Yeah. And um, and they let us stay out of the room. We had to go in another studio to go ahead and do our show for a little bit. And they said, come back in a little while. Came back in and everything was fine. So there's a lot of, um, I mean, well, there's, steps there's that are taking right now to go ahead and make sure that that's not going to happen. Recycle the air. Well, by the way, I was told by the, uh, by, the, by the woman who gave me the shot that um, uh, this is actually two COVID shots at the same time. It's the last one and the new one mm -hmm. all at one time. That's what she told me. No, that that's that's the bivalent, and they and they uh, two weeks ago the FDA uh, took the licensing away. Nobody should be using bivalent anymore. Really? Well, she said. So it was, it's now the new one. The newest one is what's called monovalent, which means just one. And it's just the current one that's floating around, I guess. Yeah, I have Moderna <laughs> this time. Got it. Um, I go to either two different places to do exercise work. Mm -hmm. and, and in these gyms, everything that you touch, oh, yeah. you have to wipe them down. That's good. That's a smart move. Well, you know, yeah. as, a, uh, as a kid, as a kid, as a person who worked out, excuse me, uh, I always even from the early days of working out was taught you bring a towel with you and then you wipe the uh, device off you know the handles or whatever right. after you're through using it yeah. because you get sweat all over them sure. well, I they have now a chemical really and it's all on a strip well, the thing that bothered take it you wipe it down and yeah but what bothered me was that uh, um, uh, I I would do this and um, I didn't know whether it, that other people who would come into the gym didn't do it. And I couldn't figure out why. You know, you're doing it to be nice to other people around you. You know. Isn't that what they made pepper spray for? You didn't, you didn't spray it down. Here, let me spray you. Yeah, let me spray you. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it's just amazing. Just amazing. Did you, do you work out, uh, uh, Tony? No. <laughs> Actually, I do. Uh, me and my brother work out together. I just do kind of like light workout. Like what? So I, I try to go like twice a week, but I haven't been going in the what's last that? two you weeks. You lift a pack. Uh, is that like incest? No, he he he, he takes two bundles of uh, comic books. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, those can get pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah. My brother actually's got the membership, so I'm under his. So we I do like the bike, and I'll do light weights and stuff like that. I used to enjoy it. But then I get bored of it. I I kind of wish like I miss playing basketball. Oh, I, I was doing like I that. was doing a bike every every day down at the gym down here. 
a really cheap gym. It's 15 bucks a month. So whether I go or not, doesn't wow. really matter. And mine's like 22. Oh, great. Yeah. And I just, uh, you know, I went down and do the bike for a half hour and go home. You know, I usually do the bike and I put my headset on. I listen to a podcast or music. You're right. Though, I get bored after a while. Sometimes I'm listening to the news. I, you know, I try to like listen to something that jazz me up a little bit. Then I usually, but you know what I do do funny is my brother doesn't shower. They he'll drive home and shower. I, you know what I do, Alex? I bought the uh, shower shoes because even though everything is clean there, he's like, get yourself shoes. But you never know with the floor, you can get athletes with or something easy. So I got like little plastic shoes that I put on my feet. They were, when I want, I want to shower there if I stink. I don't like to go home smelling. So, so, so well, oh, you, you can go home. You know, what I used to do is I'd go home immediately <clears throat> and shower. Right. That's what he does, yeah. I, sometimes I do. Sometimes I'll jump in quick just to wash it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you That's wash it do you sanitize the shower shoes when you bring them home? <laughs> I actually uh, He got me like little, like, uh, I don't know what they are. They're like slip ons. Oh, oh, I just oh. want to take a vote from everybody. We have somebody waiting in the waiting room by the uh -oh. name of Perel Laquarius Brown. You don't need to one, do you? Do, do, you think, do you think he's trustworthy? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Oh, think by the so. way, I just have to do this for Alan because he's been giving me whatever about my behind me. So, oh, ta -da! wow, you ah. finally got something behind you. No, Your my bike. bikes. Hello, I ride. Oh, but they're gathering <laughs> dust in that closet now. No, they're not. Wait All a right. minute. Wait a minute. Bikes. Oh, sorry. Why yeah, do you have two? Why bicycles. do you have two bikes? Are those mountain bikes. One of us gonna be no. They're road bikes. But I ride about seventy-five miles a week, wow. and uh, mm -hmm. I, I I got you know my doctor told me he says you want to live ride, and that's what I've been doing because yeah, I but a, Alex I, doesn't ride much and he's still around. Well, I used to I used to uh, when I yeah. lived in the marina in San Francisco, uh, I uh, I got a bike and I would go out and I went out to the Presidio out to Fort Point. You oh, know, nice. oh, and then it. back, mm -hmm. and that was about a mile and a two miles, something like that. And I would do that a cu every couple of days. Then one day, somebody stole my bike, they took it, oh. <laughs> so I got another bike, but that one never felt right. And I quit uh, doing the, the daily bike. Did you try putting a seat on it? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, because yeah. I like the way it felt the other way. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. Bike had it. yeah. you were used to. The comfort of that other yeah, well, yeah. right look looking at how fat i am and how big i am when i was a cop i used to run around this man-made lake in fremont two and a half miles every day and then work out with weights for another half hour every day that i went to work pa i'd be lucky to walk around the lake now without having part a of the time. reason you probably have gained weight though too is that if you work out and then you don't work out anymore all that muscle will turn to fat. Part of the reason is is that you're you're right. Part of the reason is that when I injured my knee, I sat around the house for three years mm -hmm. and just ate and didn't work out anymore. And so mm -hmm. I, I blimped out. Yeah, yeah. Well there's still hope. Well, you know, I lost a lot of weight a couple of years ago and then I gained some of it back because I went and had you know the cancer operation thing and all of that, and, and after that, uh, I, uh, I I kind of gained some pounds back. But I haven't lately. I I haven't put a pound on. Pants still fit just like they've always fit. You know, so whatever. Fuck you're you. muscular. Well, no, I I I I haven't been feeling yes, well lately. But Thank you know, one you thing I thought it might be, is it possible that from this last time when I couldn't sleep one night because I thought I had COVID and then I took the Paxlovid, that that was enough to give me long haul? You don't even know, really. Long you haul in what long. way? Well, I mean, that, you know, that you just, there's this long haul COVID that happens after you have COVID. And some people, it's yeah, like... Yeah, but a lot of that's mind fog and, you know, that, and you know, that's, breathing problems and stuff. You're not having those I'm, problems. Well, I'm having brain fog. I mean, I'm having, yeah, that I'm having. You know, so who so knows? I think the FDA or somebody just announced a day or two ago that they now have a blood test. Yes, I saw that. Have, I saw yeah. that. Yeah. 
They have a blood test that they can tell if you have long haul. Well, yep, long COVID. Uh, th yep. This was a disease that just kept on giving, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. So you, yep. you've had it, what, twice? I had it twice, yeah. yeah. Once hardly at all. Marjorie got it worse than I did, and I, 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 didn't, I didn't test positive till a couple of days after she did. Mm. And so I caught it really fast. Wow, and uh, uh, we did the, the I did the Paxlovid that time went away, then I came I got it again. Did the Paxlovid again went away. You know. Are you the only one on the panel that's had COVID? Who no, me? I had it. Oh, once. oh wow. Um, it's to uh, uh, Tony uh, also had it. To or, Tony, yes, had, I, I, Tony, I had, had it. it yeah, yeah. I had it the December Alex before the vaccine at. February came out. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? It felt like the flu to me. That's what it felt like for a day or two. So I love how Kevin, you know, sends his kid off to college so she can get COVID. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and I paid for it too. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. What are they doing though in the school? Oh yeah. What are they doing? Are that? they have, have they kind of gotten loosey goosey at the schools now? Uh yeah, but uh, I, you know. Portland is a pretty interesting school. I mean, um, U of O is a pretty interesting school. They, they've they got, everywhere you go, they've got, you go to the bathrooms, they got masks. They got tampons. They've got everything on the wall. In, in the men's room, room and the ladies' room. Wow. I mean, they've got all that stuff on the wall. So you walk in there and you decide you want a mask or you want a tampon or you want whatever. It's all right there on the wall. They have right tampons the in the men's room? <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, in the men's room. In the men's room. When we went up there to visit, what? What? So you can see? So you time can, of the month. When you date a woman, you give her a party. I don't gift know. I don't something. know. What is it? It was weird <laughs> because I, <laughs> it was my daughter's time of the month when we went up there to visit, <laughs> and she didn't have nothing. I went in. I, I mean, too much information. But I went in yeah. my bathroom, and I came back out, and I said, "I got you covered." <laughs> really? She goes, "What?" <laughs> I go, "They were in our bathroom." <laughs> See, it just doesn't make sense having him in the men's room. Yeah, you know? why would they? Well, put him in the it worked. I yeah, came out with the help. Mistake. You know what? I could never. What are you going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> I gave it to her. Give it to your girlfriend. Maybe put it in the wrong room. You know, <laughs> you can't read it to you, Tony. Well, what do they? What do they say? It also helps right. bullet wounds. That's what the <laughs> that's what the Russians told him. <laughs> it's a bullet wound. You know, you stick yeah. a tampon in there and get well, back out all of the it field. Is, oh, well, all it is is a blood collector. You know. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. So if you have a bullet hole, like a I imagine ball. that would be a good idea. Yeah. yeah that's and what the Russians were telling the out of the war. The Russians were telling the prisoners. You know. Here you got tampons. You go out there, you get the hole, you put it in there, and you go back out on the field. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I think I'll get this is your first car. aid kit. Get no. out there! Okay. Wow. Tony's going to uh, buy some right now. <laughs> He's trying to figure out what brand he wants. You, you know what? I never don't never, get the scented ones. You know what? I, I never know. bought though, I, because I just yeah. didn't feel they could be sanitary. Was I never yeah. bought a condom in a men's room? Oh yeah. You know how yeah, they, you wouldn't think so. Oh. Huh? You know how they would have condom? They would have the yes. condom machine. Yeah, they got the machine. Yeah, the plastic and, wrap. What you yeah, I know, I know, but somehow it just didn't seem right. It's like years ago when you would go into the subway here in New York. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you <laughs> remember it Jeff there? and and no, and and I'm sure maybe uh, uh, the bars used to have them. Well, yeah. no. What would happen? Yeah. What you would have in the subway? Were sandwich machines? Did you tell me? I watched an old movie. Yeah, no, yeah. thank you. It looked like it had. Oh, that's you know, cool. uh, with uh, and you would stand there in front of this machine. Oh, also, they had candy. Shake it first and make they, all the rats leave. <laughs> yeah, what I was saying, you're standing there looking at the choice along with the rats next to you. You know, I mean, I just never. I, I said, who who would ever? We just paid for you just Tony has friends. Head to the dog. Oh, wow. Dad's best friend. Yeah, really. Yeah. I went yeah. to high school in New York. It shows, Jeff. How on smart the train, you, you, you learn everything on the train. I'll, yeah. bet. I'll bet. That was a, the greatest Rodney Dangerfield line of all time. He said, "He said my girlfriend uh, left me uh, for my best friend." Now I don't have a girlfriend anymore, and I don't have a dog either. <laughs> <laughs>
Tony. Oh, Mueller, you know, I just, I just looked. Uh oh. Oh. He'll oh. beat me. He'll be mad at me. You got fifty seconds. Hey, wait! Seconds. I can hear the theme. Well, I'm gonna play it. Here we go. There we go. There that, it is. There's the theme. You, You're running over. Uh, thank you so much, Jeff. <laughs> thank You're you welcome. so much, Charlie. Thank you so much, uh, Alan. <laughs> thank you so much to uh, our good friend Steve Fox, uh, who you can uh, hear his little uh, on-air, uh, on-web radio station by going to gabnet.net and clicking on it on the side. Okay? I do it a lot, actually, Steve. And back at you at Alex because it's on my website too for Gabnet. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. And also a thanks to uh, Kevin and thanks to our good friend uh, Tony. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. Yeah, I'll give hard. a big wave goodbye at you. I better get out of here really fast, folks, because uh, he's going to be very mad at me if I don't. Uh, uh, Jack Bishop is next over most of the same Gabnet. See you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.